That's why it's called the planet's biggest carbon sink. Now this is good because it's kept a lot of CO2 out of the atmosphere. But as the ocean warms, it takes up less and less CO2. And with all that CO2 in the sea, scientists are shedding light on, well, an ocean of problems. So in your notes, you should write down that, uh, yeah, for a long time, the oceans were doing a good thing. They were taking carbon out of the air and storing it in the ocean. Um, well, it made the oceans warmer, which is slowing down how much carbon they can hold. So that is running out. Again, it's another reason why we need to stop putting carbon in the air. But there's more. That carbon in the ocean isn't just sitting there doing nothing. Ready for the first big problem? Some sea creatures like clams, oysters, and coral, their shells and skeletons are getting weaker. Okay, you've got bigger problems than easy-to-crack clams? Maybe not if you're among the one in seven people who get most of their protein from seafood, or if you understand how unstable the world would be with a billion more hungry people. What's weakening the shells? Well, these little creatures are going about their lives scooping up molecules called carbonate ions to be the building blocks of their shells. But when CO2... So right there, that's what shellfish like crabs and clams and oysters and, and uh, lobsters, that's what they do. When their larva, uh, they hatch from an egg, they have no shells. So they have to get these carbonates, which have carbon in them, from the seawater to start forming their shells. Well, here's what CO2 does to that process. To react with seawater, it releases hydrogen ions, which compete with shells for carbonate. With more hydrogen ions floating around in the ocean, our little friends have to spend more energy building their shells and have less energy for finding food. That means it's harder to grow, and more will die off before they get big. So carbon is changing the chemistry of the water. Uh, by taking this hydrogen from H2O, which is water, it's making a, a uh, carbon acid. And that hydrogen, which makes the water more acidic, hence the name ocean acidification, is causing problems for the shellfish. They cannot form their shells. Or like she said, they spend so much time trying to get carbonates, which are gone because the hydrogen is attaching to the carbonate uh, to make a carbonic acid that they don't grow very big, or in some cases, they can't grow a shell. And that's a serious problem. So the fish that eat the clams or live among the coral will have a harder time surviving, meaning the fish that dine on them won't have enough to eat, and so we won't have enough to eat. Remember those pesky hydrogen ions generated by more CO2? They don't just take away the carbonate ions that these little clams need. They also make the ocean more acidic. It's already become 30% more acidic since we started spewing all this CO2, and it could get much worse. We could change the ocean's chemistry so much that shells actually start to dissolve. That means if we don't turn this problem around, your great-grandkids might think of reefs the way you think of a dodo bird. And with one in four ocean species living in coral reef ecosystems, weaker coral could threaten the foundation of the whole ocean food chain. But why panic, right? Life always seems to find a way to adapt, but it needs time. In a few decades, we might make the oceans more acidic than they've been in 20 million years. This is what we learned from the last series of climate change videos. What we're doing isn't stuff that hasn't somewhat happened before. It's just that it's happened over hundreds of thousands of years. We're not giving life a chance to adapt to all these changes because they're happening too fast. And the changing pH of our oceans to become more acidic is a problem. And like you saw, it affects the whole food chain and food webs, which will affect humans in, in the long run. It's hard to imagine any ecosystem quickly adapting to that big of a change. But things don't have to get that bad. We started this problem, and we're going to fix it, beginning at its source, carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels. Learn more at aspace.org.